Yeah. So, you know, I'm kind of known as a sprinting guy with, you know, after I came out with my, it was a superhero sprint program and it was based around sprinting. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, they say that they're going at a high intensity when the reality is, you know, if you were to, I always give this example and I, and I think it paints a very good picture. Like if you were out in the wild somewhere and an, you know, a lion just popped out of the bushes and you had to sprint away, that sprint speed would probably be about a 12 out of 10. Right. <laughs> and, you know, people don't even, but the thing is people don't even come close to, you know, a 7 out of 10 or a 6 out of 10, but they think they're going at a high intensity. And, you know, going 10 out of 10, that is, you know, sprinting all out. When you watch those guys running track or whatever, that's an all out sprint. And, you know, a lot of people um, can't even get to that point. So I always tell people, you want to be right around a nine out of 10. And if, if you are, you know, an athlete and have built up to that, that 10 out of 10, and that is pushing as hard as you possibly can for that short period of time. And what this allows you to do is it allows your body to basically use all fat as what you're burning. Right. And, and the, what, what's great about it is it only takes like 10 to 12 seconds of work and then you get that rest period because you're going to need that rest period. Right. Um, I was watching uh, a video on Usain Bolt and his, and his workouts and what was crazy was in, a, in about a 10 minute period, he only worked for about a minute and 30 seconds. Right. <laughs> you know, like in, it's in, like a five was, to one work to rest ratio yeah, or more. And it, yeah. And, it, and it's like that's what people don't understand is like they don't need to work out as as long or you know or push for two straight minutes trying to sprint because your body just won't be able to handle that unless you're, you're some crazy Olympic athlete right. you know just 20, 20 to 30 seconds of an all-out exercise like you know indoors right now I'm doing sprints in place or you know even like kettlebell swings can be super challenging if you're using a challenging weight and just really pushing that threshold and then really trying to improve on that each time you you work out again. Yeah, man, that's that's a really great point you you brought up there because like with the Usain Bolt thing, because so many people are at the, they're 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 being sold high intensity training, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm a huge fan of training with intensity. There's no doubt about that. But I think that a lot of people are being sold high intensity training, and then they're actually doing medium intensity training. And me, I, I actually these days I don't mind even against medium intensity training as much as I used to be. But in order to get benefit from medium intensity training, you do have to train for a much longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to get the maximum results with the minimum time, you've got to get that ten. Right, you've got yep. to get into that zone of ten, where you could do a minute and a half of work in ten minutes, and then you know your body will reshape itself. You mentioned something interesting there. You said your body will burn primarily fat for fuel. I'm assuming you're talking about post workout window, right? Yeah. Um, so there's been multiple studies that I've you know I've looked at that it's kind of you know the the closer you can work near your anaerobic threshold, which again is like that 10 out of 10, right. um, the more fat your, your body will utilize as fuel, and that's both during and after the workout. And then plus, you know, with the afterburn effect, which is, you know, basically when you push your body very hard in a workout with that high intensity work, that's when you're going to get that extended calorie burn. And, you know, I just read a study, um, I think the time frame that the people were using was like a four or eight minute workout and they saw extended fat burning for, uh, 22 hours after the workout, right. which was a 400 and I think it was like 450% increase in metabolism, which I mean for four to eight minutes of work, I mean, I'll take, take that any day. And, you know, obviously they're doing something very, very high intensity, but it shows that you can, how much you can get done in such a short period of time when you work at that nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 level. Yeah, I completely agree. So you mentioned kind of these these basic strength movements, right? We were talking about pushes and pulls and presses and pull-ups and squats mm -hmm. and deadlift kind of motions. But then we also talked about really high-intensity training. So how do you right now string those together in your workouts? So I'll give you an, an example of what I did last night. Now, people, you know, this is more of, more of an advanced workout, but I've been really trying to up my squats um, on, sorry, my dog has her loudest toys. Hey, <laughs> that's all right. Keep going. Um, <laughs> so I've been really trying to up my squats in the 15 rep range for barbell squats. And, I, but I've been using a heavy weight cause I've been able to build up to that. And man, after 15 reps, like you, you've been pushing that nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10. And so what I do from there is I'll, you know, I'll go through to like, um, 
like a pull up or something like that. And then I'll come back and I'll either do squat jumps or sprints in place, which absolutely crush the threshold that, that you're, you're going at. So I have two exercises in there that are, you know, with the pull ups and the squats that are building that strength. And then the squats are, you know, the, the strength and the endurance. And then the sprint or the squat jumps are that threshold at the end. And I've been really doing that with a bunch of, um, my workouts lately. And I've been seeing incredible results as of my clients because, and plus the workouts last like, 20 minutes, which is great. But I mean, I have my wife took a picture of me the other day after my work and I was just laying on the ground for like 10 minutes because I couldn't move because <laughs> I was so tired. But it's like, hey, I'm done in 20 minutes. I'll take that any day. So th that sounds so simple. So you, you get warmed up, right? And then you go, you get to your work weight with your squats. You crank out 15 grueling reps. You put the bar back down. You go over and you hit some pull ups, whatever rep range is kind of a, like a, a max intensity on that or? Yeah, so I normally, it, I call it the minus two, minus two max. So you sure. go, yeah, about two reps left in the tank with that one. Right. Um, and then and you, you're trying. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And then you're just going right into the squat jumps. You t I normally try to take like a, anywhere from seven to 10 seconds just okay. to kind of make that transition period. Such a big then, break. <laughs> <laughs> no, but after the squat jumps and, uh, or either, it's either squat jumps I'll do or I'll do the sprints in place and, um, you know, those can last anywhere from 30 to 35 seconds, depending on, you know, how I'm feeling from the squats that day. Cause you know, every day is going to be different, but, sure. um, and then you take a rest period after that and you just want to make sure that you're able to do those squats again safely. You don't want to get under the bar if you're super tired. Right. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've done this, uh, workout with a couple athletes that I train and it's crazy. The squats themselves doing 15 reps at a weight that's challenging is, I mean, it, it pushes you hard. It so. does. Yeah. Are you familiar with the old uh, Randall Strosen 20 rep squat routine? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that. classic. I've done that in the past, man. And I've seen videos of people where they're on rep 15 and they throw up and then they <laughs> do the last five reps still. I mean, it's just grueling. If you guys have never done a higher rep squat with a very challenging weight, like something where when you got to 10, you're like, there's no way I can get to 11. That is just one of the most powerful techniques for, for body transformation, metabolic transformation. And personally, I think it's huge for mental toughness as well. And that's so important when you want to get to that level 10 threshold. It really is. I mean, I've, I've done, I think it was John Romanello who posted that one of those workouts and you, you do a hundred reps on squats yeah. and you try to get it in the least amount of sets as possible, <laughs> but you can only do 20, 20 reps per set. So you, it, the best you can do is five sets of 20. And oh my gosh, it is, I mean, yeah, talk about pushing, <laughs> pushing the entire time. I mean, the, you get through the first set and you're like, there's no way I'm getting set number two. And then you get it. There's no way I'm getting, you know, you just keep pumping up. It's fun one. If you, yeah, if you haven't done it, try it. <laughs> there's some sadists on the call too, who, if you guys have never switched from maybe some strength work and high intensity work to some straight up, like high rep squats or, you know, I, I, there was a period of time where I was aiming for a hundred one-legged squats in a session. And when I finally got it, oh my God, my butt and my quads and my hamstrings and my calves and everything <laughs> that's around, it was so dang sore. It was just insane. So you could do this with body weight stuff, barbell stuff, anything. So Dennis, before we move on, I, I wanted to see how many of those jump squats are you doing, are you trying to add some jump squats at the end of each one, uh, like over a period of time, you know, over a period of four weeks, you're trying to add a jump squat each session or how do you do that? Yeah. So typically like when you start depending, I mean, depending on where you're starting to begin with, it's, it can be anywhere from the, you know, the 10 rep range to the 20 rep range. Last night I did 30 and 30, doing 30 uh, squat jumps when you're really pushing and you're really trying to jump as high as you can sure. is absolutely killer. And that's the biggest thing too is like, you know, if you're, if you're able to jump higher than you did the time before but you're doing the same rep count, that's still improvement. Right. You know, you're getting right. that explosiveness and that's what you want to look for when you're, you know, trying to train like an athlete. But yeah, as the, as the you know, weeks go on, you can either add time to the workout so you can, you know, start with 10 seconds and then bump that to 15 seconds then to 20 and things like that. Um, I don't re really recommend going past like the 40 to 45 second mark for most people just because that's when form starts breaking down sure. and you stop, you know, really exploding out of the jump because that's the, really the key is you really want to try to explode on every single jump, tr jumping as high as you can. I really like what you just said with the adjusting the height because I'm, you know, I'm a huge fan of like micro progressions in terms of mm -hmm. movement, in terms of range of motion, things like that. And I, I, for some reason, until right this second, I had never considered that a way to progress with jump squats is just to maybe put a target that you touch 
and and lift that target an inch each session with the same reps. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I, I don't know why I'm so I'm so fascinated with this workout protocol because it, it just sounds absolutely grueling and it sounds like it would really force a metabolic adaptation and yet at the same time it doesn't sound like it's very dangerous and it doesn't sound like it's mm -hmm. going to take a lot of people's time so how many rounds do you do of this how long is your rest period in between sets and how long do these workouts actually last 